Your home for Hannity each afternoon at 3 p.m. Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Welcome in to News and Views with Tom Lamprecht. The stories you've heard and the ones you need to hear. Convalescent plasma for patients with the virus proven to reduce mortality by 35%. Thanks for the bold leadership that allowed us to deliver this very happy news today. Today's action will dramatically expand access to this treatment. And it's been used effectively in many cases. Your life, your values, your voice. This is News and Views with Tom Lamprecht on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, welcome in. It is News and Views. Back from vacation. Was down uh, on the beach around the Wilmington area. Had a great week off. Thank you very much. Uh, Come back to uh, find out that East Carolina University, as well as uh, a number of other schools within the UNC system, are going to online courses. The uh, move, because there are clusters of COVID-19, amongst the students. Now, a cluster is if you have at least five cases in a single resident hall or dwelling. So how many people are in one of these residence halls? Four or five hundred? And you've got five people that uh, consider that's that's a cluster. I, look, I, I understand how serious this is. I understand that people with medical conditions and older people have died from it. I understand all that. But quite frankly, when it came when it comes to young people, the people that are not vulnerable, it's it's just like Clemson football's team, the, their football team. They allowed the coronavirus to spread through the football team last spring and (laughs) now again if you just listen to the news they came out and said that clemson's the number one uh, preseason pick has nothing to do with that but they got it out of the way and i'm not trying to be caustic i'm not trying to be nonchalant but quite frankly it in certain categories and certain demographics of healthy people had we let it run the course early on we'd We'd probably be over this thing right now, but we'll continue to extend it. And uh, anyway, it is what it is, and we'll continue to uh, have issues with coronavirus. Hopefully, it'll begin to disappear, but uh, it's certainly being stubborn. So, President Trump surprise visit to Charlotte, North Carolina, to formally accept the Republican nomination for his second term. Trump decided to have a little fun with the Dems and uh, this this will drive <laughs> this will drive CNN nuts um, but he said as the crowd chanted four more years four more years Trump said now nah, if you really want to drive him crazy tell him 12 more years and and you watch there will be some nut out there on the mainstream media that will take him seriously it will happen. So as Trump continued his speech, he not only blasted the mainstream media, but he also blasted our governor, Roy Cooper. This is cut two, Clark. Uh, President Trump described Cooper as completely out of control. President Trump had this to say about Governor Cooper's r- crazy demands. Cut two. Another state that's been very good to me is Wisconsin. And, and Joe Biden was going to have their convention in Milwaukee. And they didn't go there at all. They didn't do this. We did this out of respect for your state. We didn't do this for any other reason other than respect for the state of North Carolina. Because we said we wanted to hold our convention in North Carolina. And I think you're going to remember that, frankly, on November 3rd. We wanted to hold our convention in North Carolina. So I did that out of respect. And if you had a governor that would have let us have some people, he actually told me this. We had an arena that holds 19,000 people. It was totally jammed, sold out. Every hotel was full, everything. And I called him. He said, but we have a shutdown going on. And according to the rules and regulation, now this is 19,000. He did say it. I don't think he'll deny it. But he said, according to the rules and regulations, the most people you're allowed to have in that room, meaning that arena, he viewed it as a room, 
is 10 people. I say, so governor, so I'm at 19,000, you're at 10. Can we work something in the middle? And it didn't sound too good. So we really had no choice. It was a terrible thing, but I felt so badly because you could have, I mean, economic development, money, all of the things that happened. But we decided, I was with Rana, the vice president, everybody, Mark, and we said, let's have our big deal, the roll call, let's have it right here and let's do it and I'm going to show up and I'm not going to tell anybody. You know, until a few minutes ago, nobody knew I was coming. Right? Nobody knew I was coming. So. But what's more important than the roll call? You're the ones calling it. So what's more important? So, and I have to tell you, you know, we're going to do a lot of things. I'm just going to go over very briefly because we're going to make a speech on Thursday night. I hope you're all going to be listening. Yeah. So he went on and accepted the uh, nomination of the uh, after the roll call, as did uh, Mike Pence. One of the controversies um, that happened during the speech. Now, there obviously there were people present during the speech, <laughs> not nineteen thousand, more than ten, but not nineteen thousand. But one of the uh, newest smears on the president came from uh, George Conway's group, the Lincoln Project. Uh, George Conway is the obnoxious husband of Kellyanne Conway, who, by the way, she took a leave of absence from the Trump administration basically to uh, get her family straight. And apparently, George Conway, uh, they, they agreed on something. Apparently, he, too, has taken a leave of absence. I think the uh, icing on the cake was their 15-year-old daughter, Claudia, Apparently, she has made somewhat of a spectacle of her uh, dysfunctional family with posts on social media this summer. And uh, the latest breaking point came when she posted she wanted to be emancipated from her parents. So with that, Kellyanne Conway said, I need to get home and take care of my family. And apparently, uh, the Trump hater George Conway said the same thing. But not until the Lincoln Project had one more attempt at smearing the president. The smear came when the Lincoln Project falsely accused a person of shouting monkey when President Trump mentioned Obama in Spygate. So the president's talking about how they tried to steal the election from him. And the person does not shout out monkey. If you if you go online and listen to it or listen right now, I'm going to have the audio for you. He doesn't say monkey. He says Spygate. But nonetheless, the Lincoln Project falsely accused this person of saying monkey, trying to make Donald Trump look like a racist. Here's how it sounded. In a very, very nice way, I will tell you, they are trying to steal the election, just like they did it last time with spying, and we caught them, and that included President Obama, and that included, that included, uh, let's be nice, Biden. <laughs> This could only happen in North Carolina. <laughs> but that included them, and they got caught. And then somebody said, well, what are you going to do? Well, we can't attack a president. Oh, I see. If it was me. They said, we can't attack a president. We caught him. We caught him cold. And they say, we can't attack. He was at meetings talking about it. And by the way, this was spying before and after. And I think it's a disgrace to our country. I think we can never let that happen again. But now they're doing something that in a certain way is more dangerous because it's more effective. They spied on my campaign. You know what they found? Nothing. But this is big stuff. This is stealing millions of votes and it's going to be very hard. Now we're in courts all over the country and hopefully we have judges that are going to give it a fair call because if they give it a fair call, we're going to win this election. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. We're going to win this election. We're going to win this election. So Trump mentions Obama. A voice was shouting out saying, Spygate. And again, the Lincoln Project's, oh, he said monkey. No. And uh, somebody else said, you might have heard it. Somebody else said, he, he mentions Biden and somebody else says, Sleepy Joe. And Trump playfully admonishes the speakers to let us be nice, Biden. 
And then he says this is, could only happen in North Carolina. Now, the Lincoln Project would like you to think that, oh, he's mentioning North Carolina because we're some sort of a racist state and Donald Trump is a racist. No, frankly, I think the comment that this could only happen in North Carolina is a flashback to when Trump was in Greenville, North Carolina. Remember the crowd started shouting, lock her up, and the mainstream media all went nuts. They, you know, they all, oh, the, oh how terrible that they said this. And when, frankly, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, so Trump was talking about the behavior of North Carolinians, and he was laughing at that. I mean, look, Trump does, I, I know the left loves to play the race card. It is not there. But look, he the, at, at 1.39 this afternoon, the Lincoln Project posted the video saying that Donald Trump was giving the speech and somebody shouted out monkey that that was less than 15 minutes after the event happened so they're just sitting there trying to find something to explode on trump the uh north carolina state senator natasha marcus spread the lincoln project smear quote so trump thinks it's normal in north carolina to call obama a monkey no it is not and no they didn't and no he didn't so he talks about voter fraud, and he talks about uh, how the election is uh, – they're uh, attempting to steal the election with mail-in ballot voter fraud. And he has got a great point here. He has got a great point. By the way, the Postmaster General went before Congress this afternoon, and the, the questioning that came before him – I mean, one of the one of the congressmen from Tennessee, I can't remember what the guy's name was, he actually asked the Postmaster General, do you expect it to be pardoned like Roger Stone was pardoned? Had nothing to do. I mean, at, the, at this point, the other members of Congress are shaking their heads and moaning and groaning, and, and the Postmaster General just says, look, I'm not going to answer that. This is ridiculous. I'm not gonna, but this is the kind of games the Democrats are playing. But the Daily Caller is reporting today that a state superior court judge ruled last week that a new election will be held for a disputed Patterson, New Jersey city council seat after allegations of voter fraud via mail-in ballots. The ruling comes after weeks of, after voter fraud charges were brought against the May 12th election winner, Alex Menendez. Um, he was charged with voter fraud along with Patterson Council Vice President Michael Jackson, Shalim Kawalik, and Abdu uh, Razin, all of whom have denied the charges, according to The Hill. An investigation performed by the U.S. Post Office Service Law Enforcement Armed found hundreds of mail-in ballots in a Patterson mailbox, as reported by the Associated Press. Ultimately, 800 ballots were discounted by the uh, Passaic County Board of Elections, and another 2,300 ballots were rendered inintelligible after, uh, ineligible, I should say, after analyzing signatures on the on file, comparing those to the ballots. So you, you had disqualification of 3,100 ballots, 22% of the total ballots cast, and this is for a city council race, 22% ineligible. A June press release from the Office of the New Jersey Attorney General quoted the Attorney General as saying, Today's charges send a clear message. If you try to tamper in an election in New Jersey, we will find you and we will hold you accountable. We will not allow a small number of criminals to undermine the public confidence in our democratic process. So they've, the, the judge ruled today you're going to have to have a new election. This is the kind of garbage that you're going to have if you have these mail-in ballots. And as Donald Trump just said and when he was down in Charlotte earlier today, They've got judges all over the country reviewing the situation. We better, I, I mean, if you want to know who the winner is, you better hope and pray that the judges rule in the favor. I mean, it is, ob 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 not, it is just absurd that they would even consider something like this. And, and the Democrats, they even go further when, when in their, their uh, what was it, the, the HEROES Act or the CARES Act, whatever they called it, the HEROES Act. Nancy Pelosi... In that act, she had in there that you, you, they didn't want to have to have any signatures on mail-in ballots. None. No verification. So, yes, the judge says we're going to have a new election. 
because of the voter fraud. But I want to know who's going to go to jail for this. You talk about disenfranchisement. They talk about disenfranchisement because Republicans want to have voter ID, and they go ballistic. This, and, and they think it's not disenfranchisement if you just open up the floodgates and let as many people vote as often as you want. That is, that's the worst kind of disenfranchisement because you have a fraudulent election. This, certainly not very good. Not at all. This is exactly what Putin does over in Russia. What do the Democrats say? The uh, governor, Democrat governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, he comes out and says, the president's campaign is putting itself on record as wanting to delegitimize our November election instead of working with us to ensure that voters' rights are upheld alongside public health. And, and no, it, the president has nothing to do with delegitimizing your November election, your local election from May, May the 12th, that delegitimizes your November election. It's a fraud. And Donald Trump, please do all you can. William Barr, please do all you can to make sure we don't have vote-in ballots. And look, I saw somebody posted over the weekend, 37 million people a day go to Walmart across this country. 37 million people a day go to Walmart. And yet they're all upset. Oh, you can't go to vote. We can't go to a voting place. Heaven forbid we do that. 37 million people a day go to a Walmart. And the bottom line is how many people, what's the percentage of the people that are going to vote in this general election? I mean, if it's 30%, that's a high number. If it's 40%, that's miraculous. And you're going to have early voting. It can be spread out. I mean, this is, this is total hypocrisy. By the way, uh, before we go to break, um, Fox News is reporting authorities in Charlotte deployed pepper spray and made multiple arrests Sunday evening as demonstrators returned to the streets for the third night in a row to protest the RNC convention. You'll, you'll see more of this. Uh, and, of course, there are a class act, no RNC and CLT and F Donald Trump. Um, that's, that's basically where they are. That's their vocabulary that not... They don't say much without the F-bomb being a part of it. But um, you, you'll see this. You'll con continue to see this. They want to give the impression that all of America hates Donald Trump. Actually, there's some really, really, really good news uh, concerning how the vote possibly will turn out. We'll have those stories and more. Stay with us. More news and views coming right back. Cross and Crown Christian Store and Printing Services in Aden is your source for inspirational books, Bibles, children's material, greeting cards, church supplies, gifts for all occasions, and they have Bible imprinting on site. But Cross and Crown Christian Store and Printing Services is more than just a bookstore. They are also your destination for custom printing of all kinds, including programs, banners, menus, checks and banking products, invitations, business cards and stationery, promotional products, mailing services, and so much more. Cross and Crown Christian Store and Printing Services is located at 3928 Lee Street in Aden. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 530. You can also give them a call at 252-746-6128. That's 746-6128. Visit their Facebook page or go online at mycrossandcrown.com for Cross and Crown Christian Store and Printing Services in Aden. Dogwood State Bank is not only the newest bank in Eastern Carolina, they're committed to being the best local bank. Through their branches in Greenville, Moorhead City, and Wilmington, they're offering their customers competitive rates, the latest financial products, and the local touch that banking has lost. And it's no surprise because Dogwood State Bank President Steve Jones is a pirate. He knows the market's needs and is committed to creating the best local banking experience east of Raleigh. Learn more at dogwoodstatebank.com. Member FDIC. My mom was diagnosed with Parkinson seven years ago. Her dementia is worsening, and after dad passed, I moved her in with my husband and I. Mom's fought this beast for so long, and I can tell she's tired. 
Mom deserves better. Mom deserves home. Mom deserves the team at Cruet Health Hospice. You see, I thought hospice was only for people in their dying days, but I was wrong. Pruitt Health Hospice brought mom back to her life. The partners at Pruitt Health Hospice work to treat the whole person, not just the signs and symptoms of an illness. That means they support their patients, yes, physically, but also emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Pruitt Health Hospice provides nurses, social workers, chaplains, CNAs, volunteers, and physicians all from the comfort of our home. They worked together to provide forms of patient care that ultimately shared a common goal to relieve my mother's suffering and improve her quality of life, however long that may be. Thank you, Pruitt Health Hospice, for all you do and for being committed to caring. Accelerate your future with the Emergency Medical Science Program at Pitt Community College. Students learn essential skills to provide advanced emergency medical care as a paramedic. Training includes real-life simulations using an ambulance simulator. Employment opportunities include emergency medical services, fire departments, rescue agencies, and hospital specialty areas. With over 24,000 students enrolled in over 4,000 classes, we're Pitt Community College. Accelerating your future for success. Back to news and views. Talk 96.3 and 1037. Welcome back in News and Views with Tom Lampract and uh, taking a quick look at your weather forecast. Uh, it's going to sort of be a repeat of last week, but not as much rain. Basically, throughout the entire week, it's going to be partly sunny with about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain, high in the upper 80s, and in the evenings, overnight lows in the lower 70s. You know, when I was on vacation last week, it felt like fall. I don't know how it was up here, but down at the beach, the humidity was low. It was it was it was a great week at the beach. Um, the Daily Wire is reporting that Newt Gingrich has come out and predicted Donald Trump will not only win, but he's going to win on a landslide. He said, "I'm predicting that it will be a dramatically bigger victory than people currently expect." Well, of course, a lot of people don't expect him to win, so any any victory is going to be bigger. I've said all along I think he's going to win. I guess I'm in good company. Uh, and the former House Speaker knows a thing or two about election. He won 10 in a row before retiring in 1999. It's hard to believe he has been out for 21 years. He said, I'm going to go out on a limb. You can uh, keep this tape and remind me about it after the election. Donald Trump's going to win. Donald Trump's going to win because, in the end, the country is not going to reward big banks, big unions, big bureaucracies, big donors, and big corruption by voting for a big liar. And in the end, the country is going to say, you know what? Whatever Trump's weaknesses may be, he is a sincere guy trying very hard to this, get this country back on the right track. I think he is absolutely right. In fact, there was a couple of posts today by a guy by the name of Wayne Grudem. And, uh, you know, he has just gone through and cited the number of things that Donald Trump has done right. It was actually a letter that was copied. Now, the recipient of the letter, we, we don't know who the recipient was, but in this letter to a friend, a Christian friend, uh, Wayne Grudem, by the way, is uh, teaches theology at a uh, what is the name of the, the seminary? It's in in uh, I don't see it here. He but he teaches uh, theology at a seminary in Arizona. But he just goes through and just says to his friend, "Okay, you don't like his character, but I'm not about character. I'm about policy." And and the excuse you hear from so-called rhinos are some people who maybe are sincere, but all they're looking at is the guy's character and say, we don't like his character, so therefore we're going to just push away his policies. And they'll say things like, setting aside his policies, Donald Trump is not fit to be— uh, Well, wait a minute. What is the most important thing? In all honesty, what is the most important thing? I mean, character is, is an important thing. Don't get me wrong. But— when you're talking about character, you're upset because he tweets too much? You're upset because sometimes he talks like a sailor? And, and okay, those are important issues. I'm not just I'm not totally disregarding them. But quite frankly, the character of the the, the fact of the matter is the guy has kept his word. He has done what he said he was going to do when he was running. How, 
you talk about character. How many presidents, and like Joe Biden is a great example of this, how many presidential candidates say one thing, and then they win, and do they do any of it? Do they do any of it? No. The best they might do is nominate someone who they think is a conservative for the Supreme Court. But Wayne Grudem says, look at, look at his Supreme Court nominees. Look at the 53 federal appellate judges. Look at the 146 district court judges. Look at the fact that there's, there's some 64 that are yet to be approved by the Senate. Look at his tax cuts that he promised. Look at the deregulation that he promised. Look at the number of jobs that it built up. Look at the fact that he said he was going to rebuild the military and he's done it. Look at, the, look at his stance on the pro-life movement, on abortion, how he has defunded so many organizations that their primary function is abortions. Remember, with Planned Parenthood, he forced Planned Parenthood that if you're going to do an abortion, you've got to do it outside the building that you do your other operations. Look at his expansion of education freedom. Betsy DeVos. Now, look, I, the mainstream media hates Betsy, Betsy DeVos, and you'd think, if you listen to any of the mainstream media, you'd think she was the wife of Satan. I mean, you really would. Why? Because she is a leading advocate for school choice. She is the Secretary of Education. She is for charter schools. She's for taxpayer-funded uh, vouchers. She is for tax credits. She's for private schools. She's for all those things. And she's for public schools, good public schools. But the unions, the teachers' unions, hate her. Look how he stood with Israel. How many presidents have come in there and said they're going to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? It, it goes back how many years? Might go back to Ronald Reagan. And yet, who did it? Donald Trump said he was going to do it, and he did it. He's signed this agreement between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. He's, he, how many guys have said they're going to build a border wall? He's done it. I, I, the list goes on and on and on and on. Energy independence. Did you notice that gas prices since Donald Trump took office? have come down probably 30%. Defeating ISIS. Every day in the news when Obama was in the presidency, what do we hear about? How ISIS has expanded, how we had more deaths from the Middle East. You never hear that anymore. He's gotten uh, NATO countries to pay, pay their fair share. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> uh and I, that's why Donald Trump is going to win re-election. Now, they've got to do a good job communicating that. But, I mean, people are not going to put up with 90 days of continual rioting. Do you think people, I don't care if you're black, white, green, or yellow, people are not going to put up with that. They're not going to look at their cities burnt, and they, they're burning them again. Uh, it's interesting, too, to note that while the Democrats, the Biden Democrats and the AOC Democrats and the Bernie Sen Sanders Democrats, they all talk about how we got to get rid of Donald Trump. That's, but that's about the only thing they have in common. Really interesting. They finally today released the vote on the Democratic platform. Now, it w this is the most progressive Democratic platform in the history of our country, Republican or Democrat. And yet, it did not include health care reform. It did not include the New Green Deal. Uh, I say health care reform. It didn't include health care. It didn't include Medicare for all. It didn't include the New Green Deal. And as a result... A third, a third of the people that voted on the party platform voted against it. The DNC revealed over the weekend that 3,562 delegates voted to approve the platform, while a total of 1,069 voted no. So basically a third either voted no or abstained, 87 abstained. You know, what's interesting about this is 
the mainstream media is constantly harping as if it's a bad thing that Republicans don't agree on everything. And by the way, Jeff Flake, you know, he's heading up uh, Republicans for uh, a Biden committee. How can how can anybody that says that they're a Republican, how can anybody look if you don't like Donald Trump, then just keep your mouth shut. But how can Jeff Flake, John Kasich and these other yo-yos claim to be Republican and they're heading up committees to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? And look, you're not electing Joe Biden. It's pretty obvious. Joe Biden, the guy that comes out and says, hello, everybody, I'm the husband of Joe Biden. (laughs) Look, if I came on the air and said, hello, everybody, I'm the husband of Tom Lamprecht, they'd call up the guys in the white coats. What do we do? Mainstream media ignores it. But you're not going to. So you're basically electing Kamala Harris, a, a pure Marxist. You might look at Joe Biden and say, well, you know, he's pretty harmless. He ain't going to be around very long. If he makes it, you know, why is he not out campaigning? He doesn't have the stamina to do it. (laughs) He does not have the energy to do it. He can't get through a speech. So anyway, I say all that to say, look, if if the mainstream media, if it's the Republicans, they'll, oh, they just clamor to talk about how the Republicans can't agree on anything. And look, I've always said, well, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be marching in lockstep. We shouldn't be lemmings, as usually the Democrats are. In this case, though, they didn't agree on their party platform, which was super progressive. And yet, they couldn't agree on it. You're not going to hear in the mainstream media talk about this. The News and Observer, the liberal News and Observer, they ran a story today. From, now, last week, Bernie Sanders, when the Democrats had their convention, Bernie Sanders urged his supporters to unite behind Joe Biden, telling a virtual Democratic National Convention that the price of losing to Donald Trump this time is unthinkable. Quote, my friends, I say to you, the former presidential candidate said, to everyone who supported other candidates in the primary and to those who have voted for Donald Trump in the last election, the future of our democracy is at stake. Yeah. It is. If you vote for Joe Biden, the, the democracy is over. Well, the republic is over. We're not a democracy, a pure democracy. We're a democratic republic. But he says the future of our economy is at stake. Yeah, it is. Now, not the way you think. It's sort of like how, Joe, how uh, Barack Obama said, you know, I'm all for hope and change. The change he wanted wasn't the change you wanted. When, when Joe Biden and, and – uh, uh, Bernie Sanders gets out and says, you know, the future of our economy at stake, the future of our planet is at stake, the future of our democracy is at stake. Yeah, the democracy will be gone. We won't have a republic anymore. The economy will be in the tank. And the planet, yeah, we'll be, we'll be subsidizing jihadist regimes and Marxist regimes, and we'll all look like Venezuela. So the planet will be at stake. But now, this is the News & Observer writing this. This is, this is rather stark, considering it's coming from McClatchy, the News & Observer. If interviews with nine Sanders supporters in North Carolina are any guide, even Sanders' most passionate supporters, while they might not mean much convincing, some feel like they're being forced to choose from, a ma- from among bad options. One of the, this guy, uh, Anna, or gal, Anna... Brivich of Carborough, you know, there's a liberal community for you. She said, quote, I guess if you hold a gun to my head, Biden. Um, out of the nine people they interviewed, almost all said they would vote for Biden, but re- reluctantly or with reservations. One said he is leaning toward voting neither for Biden nor Trump. That sentiment is widespread support for Biden on the left seems to hold true in six battleground states, according to the New York Times and Siena College polls from July. Only 21% of Sanders voters and 40% of Warren voters um, have a very favorable view of Biden. In comparison, Biden's primary supporters, they have a very favorable view of the candidate at a 77% clip. Sanders voters say by a 69 to 26% margin, their vote is more a vote against Trump than for Biden. 
So what does all this mean? It means the enthusiasm gap is alive and well. You do not win elections. And and by the last week, I was on vacation. I am proud to say I did not watch one minute of the DNC convention online, not one minute. And it was great. But looking back on that convention, you, you do not win an election. I've said this before. I mean, the Republicans learned this when they tried to do this tactic against Barack Obama. You do not win an election by running the other guy down or the other gal down. You win the election by casting a vision, which, by the way, Trump came out with his vision today. But they have got a huge, huge enthusiasm gap. 21% of Sanders voters and 40% of Warren supporters only, only 21%, only 40% have a very a favorable, very favorable view of Joe Biden. What does that tell you? 79% of Biden supporters don't have a favorable view of Joe Biden. 60% of Elizabeth Warren voters don't have a favorable view of Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, we're less than 90 days from the election. That, that, those are terrible numbers for Joe Biden. I think Newt Gingrich is right. I think it's going to be, you know, it'll be interesting if it's, it's, a, if it's a big surprise or, uh, who, or who is going to be surprised. My hunch is that uh, the way they're hiding Joe Biden in his basement still, still, <laughs> I think they know they're in trouble. We've got to take another time out. Love to hear from you. 561-8255. We'll be right back. It's summertime. Hey, it is Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come check out our huge selection of Ram trucks. Come see us. Come see us. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep has incredible savings on Ram trucks right now. Get 0% financing for 72 months and no payments for 90 days. That's right. Get 0% for 72 months and no payments until November on Ram trucks. And hey, summer is in full swing. It's time for a new Jeep. Hurry into the summer clearance event at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep and get 0% for 72 months and no payments for 90 days on most Jeep models, including the most awarded. SUV ever, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And check out the new Jeep truck, the new Jeep Gladiator. We are East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, serving customers and community for over 37 years. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. A cost of the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Come see us, come see us. Customer must qualify for all rebates and dealer for details. When you need to hire a mover, call the A-Team, Advanced Moving and Storage, the ace movers of Eastern North Carolina. We do everything we can to make a move less stressful for you and your family. Everything from buying your things in your house if you're downsizing to taking you across the country. We do it all. For 27 years, Advanced Moving and Storage has provided local, interstate, and interstate moving for our residential and commercial clients. We offer short and long-term storage. We also offer a moving services for pianos, gun safes. We can move it all. Ten years ago, we started a sister company, The Loose Goose. We purchase things that you don't want anymore. We do anything we can to make it easier for you. So come by and check us out at Advanced Moving and The Loose Goose. We're located on Four Lines Road in Winterville. Turn beside Harbor Freight and Harley-Davidson. Remember, call the A-Team, 252-321-3200. 252-321-3200. On the north shore of the Pungo River, just eight miles from the massive Pamlico Sound, lies the beautiful town of Bell Haven. This picturesque community has attractive historic buildings, shops, restaurants, and incredible open water views. Come to Bell Haven and find out why the boats stop here. O'Neill's Drugs offers the fastest and friendliest service in Bell Haven. Located on the corner of Main Street near 264 Bypass, their family's been taking care of families like yours since 1932. Visit them at O'Neill's Drug. Com. Market declines, unemployment, oil prices. Don't let headlines.
guidelines derail your long-term financial strategy. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Mike Goodwin can help. Stop by the office at 183 East Water Street in Bellhaven. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Since 1960, Sawyer's Land Developing has served landowners and local utilities with clearing, grading, and heavy earth construction. When you partner with Sawyer's Land Developing, your project will be on time, high quality, and on budget. Call 943-2154 or online at SawyersLandDeveloping.com. From the governor on down to the city council, we've got your updates on all things COVID and more. For the latest on the outbreak. Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Now, back to news and views. Uh, Welcome back in. Um, We know that Kim Jong-un, the so-called sexiest man alive, really isn't that sexy. But now the bigger question is, is he alive? North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been in a coma for months, and all his recent public appearances were staged. This according to a South Korean official in a new report. Chang Sung Min, a former aide to the South Korean president, the former South Korean president, Kim Jan Jong, alleged that Kim has become seriously ill amid speculation about his limited public appearances this year. In April, rumors circulated that the hermit kingdom Hancho was the Hancho that was in a vegetative state after a botched harp operation. The former aide now claims Kim fell into a coma months ago and that his subsequent appearances were recorded previously, according to the UK's son. I assess him to be in a coma, but his life is not ended. Now, apparently, they're trying to get the younger sister, Kim Yo-jong, to uh, set her up to lead the country. Uh, That's going to be interesting. Apparently, hard to believe, but apparently she's more vile than uh, her big brother the sexiest man alive, who's neither sexy and maybe not alive. Uh, So we'll see where this goes. But uh, the guy's only 36 years old. Not good health care over there. Too many cigarettes, too much booze, too many rich food, too much rich food. We were talking about Joe Biden. Isn't it interesting that... The mainstream media and all the Democrats right now, they're all trying to hang Donald Trump on COVID, that he's somehow really guilty about how he handled COVID. Quite frankly, the way he handled COVID was not bad at all. I mean, he basically came in early on. I mean, just remember when Nancy Pelosi was laughing at Donald Trump that it was xenophobic to stop travel from China. And then go visit Chinatown, go have a big time, go out to dinner. They were vilifying Trump then, but now they're saying he didn't respond quick enough. Uh, he responded quicker than anybody else did. He was right when it came to uh, hydroxychloroquine. Uh, by the way, they also passed a, a, a plasma type of treatment for those people in the hospital. And again, some doctors came out and said, oh, it hadn't been tested, it hadn't been tried. We don't know. We haven't done enough tests. I, again, these are these are standard procedures that we've done with other viruses and diseases for decades. But they're trying to hang Donald Trump that he didn't have a good COVID response. And Joe Biden <laughs> makes you gag to watch the mainstream media slobber over Joe Biden's speech last week. But again, during the speech, you know, he tried to hang Donald Trump. Oh, you know, the COVID response was terrible. So what would Joe Biden do? Well, the Wall Street Journal came out today with an editorial saying, you know what? Joe Biden's COVID plan sounds awful familiar, like it's a carbon copy of what Donald Trump is currently doing. And he comes out talking about, you know, we need to develop and deploy rapid tests with results available immediately. Well, that's good. Um, that's what the Trump administration is doing right now. Right now, we're conducting 700,000 tests a day. So basically, at at that rate, I mean, within two months, we'll have everybody tested. Well, no, no, it's going to be longer than that, wouldn't it? It'd be several months. But we had, although looking back, uh, we had 400,000 in early June, 100,000 in late March. Now we're up to 700,000. 
Biden is also co- calling for a coordinated countrywide future facing national effort to acquire produce and distribute PPE tests, machines, lab supplies, cl- critical supplies. The Trump administration has done that. They ramped up the, the ventilators overnight. I, he, Donald Trump is a businessman. He knows how to get things done. I mean, everything that Biden has come up with in his COVID plan is exactly what Trump is doing. Now, you're not going to hear that from the mainstream media. Speaking of copying, now, we all know that Joe Biden plagiarizes. I mean, it's he's not all there. Well, yeah, no, he's not. But he plagiarized. I mean, it's a proven fact. But guess what? He plagiarized himself. His speech. He, his speech. Now, I don't, the original speech might have been plagiarized, too. His speech from last week was basically a carbon copy of the speech he gave in 2008 in his acceptance speech for, to be the vice president. Now, it's going to sound a little funny because this is actually at double speed, so we can get through more of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you. I'm just going to play a little bit. Listen to the two versions of the Joe Biden speech. It's pretty much a carbon copy from 2008. Barack Obama has worked his way up. He is the great American story. Senator Kamala Harris, she's a powerful voice for this nation. Her story is the American story. That work is more than a paycheck. It's dignity. A job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's respect. It's about whether or not you can look your child in the eye and say, we're going to be all right. It's about respect. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay and mean it. My dad, my dad who fell on hard times. You know, my dad was an honorable, decent man. He got knocked down a few times pretty hard. Always told me, though, champ, when you get knocked down, get up. Get up. But he always got back up. He worked hard, and he built a great middle-class life for our family. And why he'll make college more affordable. That's the change we need. And where cost doesn't prevent young people from going to college, and student debt doesn't crush them when they get out. Barack Obama, Barack Obama will transform the economy by making alternative energy a national priority. Yeah, that's Joe Biden. That's just a sample of Joe Biden. He, he gave the same speech in 2008, gave it again in 2020. I guess he think, well, Barack Obama won when I gave that speech. <laughs> He's probably crediting himself. That was such a good speech. I need to give it again. We got to take another timeout. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Your child's education is so important. Their primary and secondary education is the foundation for the rest of their life. Here at Greenville Christian Academy, we understand the importance of your child's education. As a matter of fact, we educate so that your child can be prepared to do whatever God would have for them. Combining a world-renowned Christian curriculum with trained and qualified teachers, GCA provides an excellent education for each student. I go to Greenville Christian Academy. I really enjoy the school. I've been here since K-4. I love my school because it's so personable. I've grown so much spiritually. It feels like family. GCA has made me the person I am today. GCA will not only prepare them to learn now, but we will prepare them to be lifelong learners. We pray that you'll consider joining the GCA family. For more information on enrolling, call 252-756-0939 or visit greenvillechristian.com today. Corona Outdoor Products is your exclusive Eastern North Carolina dealer for the ultimate UTV, the Rock Sword. Rocksor is a 4x4 turbo diesel, all-steel, rugged, fun vehicle that's ready for the farm, the beach, the town, wherever life takes you. With an on-site test rack that gives you the full experience, Corona Outdoor Products is excited to be the exclusive Rocksor dealer from Myrtle Beach to Virginia. And while you're here at Corona Outdoor Products, you can also see four other great manufacturers at the same location. We have a great selection of Chevrolet, GMC, Buick, and Ford vehicles to go along with an experienced and friendly sales and service staff to make it all easy for you. Make the short trip to Wallace, North Carolina and check out Corone Outdoor Products. Check out the website at BillCoroneCars.com or give us a call, 910-285-7151. Come see the ultimate UTV, the rock store at Corone Outdoor Products. Give us a try. You'll be glad you did. I'm here with my good friend Scott Shook of the Shook Rouse Group of BB&T, Scott and Stringfellow. Scott, what are the main philosophies that you and Thomas follow to help your clients? Henry, we start by talking with our clients about their financial goals. Once we have an understanding of what they want to accomplish, we advise them on investing their assets in a manner they can be comfortable with through good times and bad. We firmly believe that asset allocation, diversification, and rebalancing are the only long-term strategy, not timing the market. Scott, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? 
That's easy. Henry, just give us a call at 252-378-3299. BB&T Scott Streamfellow is a division of BB&T Securities, LLC, member of FINRA SIPC. BB&T Securities is a wholly owned, non bank subsidiary of Truist Financial Corporation. Securities and insurance products are annuity sold, offered, or recommended are not a deposit, not FDIC insured, not guaranteed by a bank, not insured by any federal government agency, and may lose value. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Asset allocation cannot eliminate the risk of fluctuating prices and uncertain returns. Diversifying investments does not insure against market loss. The countdown to November 3rd continues. 2020 is looking really easy. Now it's back to news and views on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. The Tennessee Star is reporting that parents of students who attend Rutherford County Schools in Tennessee must agree not to mon- excuse me, not to monitor their child's online classroom sessions. This is unbelievable. Officials at all county schools are asking parents to sign a form agreeing not to watch the online classes. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. The Rutherford County Schools strives to present these opportunities in a secure format that protects student privacy to the greatest extent possible. They don't care about student privacy. They care about the teacher's privacy. They want the teachers to be able to do and say all kinds of Marxist propaganda. Now, I'm not saying every public school teacher does this or wants to do this, but those ones that slip through, those ones that want to embrace transgenderism, those ones that embrace Marxism, the ones that want to run down Donald Trump, and we've got story after story after story along those lines. Those teachers that want to allow transgenders, to the guys to use the girls' bathroom, et cetera, et cetera, They don't want to be found out. It's not about student privacy. It's about teacher privacy. The form asks parents for the signature and warns that violation of this agreement may result in the Rutherford County Schools removing the child from the virtual meeting. Unbelievable. What idiot parent would ever sign this? What idiot administrator would ever ask a parent to sign this? (laughs) Folks, if you're looking at your child in public schools. I'm not knocking public schools. I'm just saying you better pay close, close attention. When they're saying, hey, none of your business, parents, don't look in here, that's when you need to look in there. Thanks for being with us. We'll do it again tomorrow at 5. See you then, everybody. Bye-bye. Fabric and home.